After successfully reinvigorating the Dragon Age franchise with Dragon Age Inquisition, it seemed very much that Bioware was making a recovery from the combined effect of both the poorly received Dragon Age 2 and one of the largest examples of fan-based disappointment in gaming history, the reaction to Mass Effect 3's triple selection ending. Mass Effect 3 was and should always be seen, at least for the time being, as the end of the story of Commander Shepard. It was clear that Bioware had no intentions of extending the story and early ideas of a possible prequel were not welcomed by fans of the series. This left Bioware with a very large problem. The three ending structure of Mass Effect 3 had left three very different states for the fictional Milky Way universe that had been built over the course of the three games. With even the game director of Mass Effect 3 not willing to commit to which of the endings might actually be considered the correct one, it simply was not feasible to create a new game directly from the ending of Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect, though, is Bioware's biggest IP, and the idea of embarking on a completely new chapter in a different galaxy seemed to be an excellent solution. Having not quite learnt from the design process of Dragon Age Inquisition, Bioware stumbled into pre-production of what would become Mass Effect Andromeda, but it seems clear that even though there was some idea of where they were heading, there wasn't a clear defined direction from the outset. The pre-production stage was plagued by inexperienced staff members, experienced staff members either working on another project, which became Anthem, or leaving the company altogether, and as ever, the frostbite engine, which was giving everyone frostbite, snarling and hissing at anyone attempting to make it do anything it didn't like. This was coupled with Bioware's ambition for the project. We've got to risk a full power start. The engines were shut off, no time to regenerate. Do you hear me? We've got to risk a full power start! I expected my father, our customs. I was ashamed of my Earth. That ambition has resulted in the game being littered with technical issues, even after several updates. As a disclaimer, this reviewer has played it solely on a standard PlayStation 4 and cannot comment on whether or not the game runs any better on any other platform. Playing the game means accepting that there will be problems with loading, the hard drive sometimes cannot keep up with the demands of the CPU being called on it, so there are freezes, infinite loading screens which require a game restart, texture popping, AI phasing in and out, animations and AI sometimes being static, occasional poor response times from inputs depending on the intensity of the situation, sound dropping in and out, problems with cutscenes where sometimes characters don't even appear in the scene, to name just a few. Combat is the best that there's ever been in Mass Effect, but the player has to get used to an unnecessary zoomed in third person view when a weapon is drawn, which is just awkward as well as a cover system that relies on proximity to objects that just doesn't work anywhere near as well as it should. Yet the freedom of movement that the player has is extremely good. Players can zip around with a jump jet, allowing them to quickly dodge as well as hover in place, and both of these abilities combined with an array of special skills that the player can choose from can easily compensate for the poor cover system. Although perhaps seen as a cover-based shooter, Mass Effect Andromeda's combat is lively, fast-paced and far from static. It is one of the best features of the game, even though at times it can be frustrating. Beyond the combat, though, are some gorgeous-looking open-world environments to explore. At times, the game is extremely beautiful. The alien landscapes, the design ideas implemented within them, the use of colour, lighting and shading, the excellent sky spheres and the incredible level of detailing all merge together to create a true sci-fi epic feel. As with past Bioware games, the ability to create and customise your own character is a huge bonus. Watching your character star in every cutscene augments the attachment that you have to them. As with any great RPG, the levelling up the acquisition of new skills, crafting new and better equipment is encouragement to continue on. This is combined with a wealth of in-game lore that is found through items such as data pads and consoles liberally scattered throughout the Helios cluster. 
As for the main story, well, in the same way that Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens is a homage to Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope, and despite the intention that it is separate from the original trilogy, it proves to be very similar to the original story of Mass Effect. Yet, if you are willing to look past and accept all of the technical issues, the disjointed nature of some of the quest and storylines, the mixed quality and implementation of the voice acting performances and facial animations, and accept that this isn't part of the original trilogy, then, and only then, you might actually discover that getting lost in the Helios cluster of the Andromeda galaxy isn't actually that bad at all. Mass Effect Andromeda is an entertaining and involved sci-fi role-playing experience, 